What's going on, everybody? I'm Johnny Pena Sports, and today we're going to talk about the signing of defensive tackle Justin Ellis. Now, his nickname is Jelly, so you know he's a big Mamba Jamba. He's 6'2", 350 pounds, somewhere around there. But the Giants needed guys in the middle of the defensive line badly. Now, we have David Moa. I like David Moa, but I don't want to rely on him developing the start next season. Justin Ellis is a proven depth player, defensive tackle. Now, I don't see him getting 60%, 70% of the snaps next year. So the Giants definitely got more work to do at the defensive tackle position. But I actually like this signing. Like, he is, he has performed well at Baltimore in Wings defense. Joe Shane has really focused in on bringing in guys for them early downs on defense, you know, and them running downs. Now, Ellis and Jihad Ward added to this team will improve the running defense from what we saw last season. You know, Ellis is much better than Danny Shallon. But in 2019, Justin Ellis was actually the 11th ranked run stuffer in NFL by PFF. So there is potential here in this signing. Now, some will poo-poo the move, but there is things you can look at and point back to to make a case that this was a decent signing at a minimum. Much, much needed in my opinion. He was a fourth round pick here, and he started out his career very strong. I mean, he performed much better as a starter than a depth guy. The problem he ran to early in his career with the Raiders was injuries. You know, he'd be great for seven, eight games, and then he'd get hurt, go on the IR. And that cycle just pretty much kept happening, especially his first two seasons. When John Gruden came in, he was released. You know, Gruden's always had that mantra, you know, best ability is availability. But them early injuries really hurt Ellis's development because at one point his arrow was pointing up and he was looking like he was going to be one of the better young defensive tackles in the league. Now, it never played out that way, but that does make me feel a little bit better about the signing. And listen, Justin Ellis has had great value to the Ravens the last three years. He has really held that defensive line together when Brandon Williams missed a game here and there or Calais Campbell. One good sign is Ellis didn't miss a single game last year, so maybe the injuries are behind him at this point because we need him healthy or we're going to have trouble next season at defensive tackle. But listen, this guy is just a pure run stuffer. You know, he's a specialist with that category. He's not going to give you much in the pass rush department, but he still does get some push here and there, which is a big help to your edge guys. From the tape I watched last year, he was regularly walking guards backwards on pass rush snaps. And on top of that, he's pretty good at getting his hands up and batting down passes. You know, and he was doing that at a better clip than any of our interior D-line guys actually just getting his hands up. He also has at least one block field goal in his career. So I like that if he don't get to the quarterback, which he probably won't, he at least has some value out there to stick his arm up and bat down a throw. Now, he actually registered three quarterback pressures last season. He previously only had one quarterback pressure his entire career. So maybe that's something that he's starting to improve on. So Justin Ellis will come in here you know, and just anchor down the middle of the defensive line, soak up double teams, and I'm comfortable with him playing 35-40% of the snaps. Basically, I want to see him when the Giants are in their base defense or down the goal line. You know, I don't think we'll be seeing Justin Ellis being knocked backwards off the snap like we did with Danny Shelton. I mean, I'm not going to pretend I saw every snap from Ellis, but I did see a good chunk, and it wasn't one embarrassing rep like some of the plays we saw from Shelton last season. It's embarrassing <laughs> a man the size of Shelton gets pushed around like that. So we got better depth at nose tackle for sure, and Justin Ellis is cheap as hell next season. Now we need one more guy at defensive tackle, at least one. And will the Giants draft a nose tackle this draft? I don't know. I hope so. I mean, Travis Jones from UConn should be there, pick 36 in the second round. That'll be tempting to grab him. If that's the route the Giants go, I'll be happy. If they don't draft a defensive tackle, then there is going to be another signing coming here for this position. Calais Campbell is still out there for the taking. But he'd be a great fit for the Giants right now. Either which way, this is a good value signing for a position the Giants need bodies in badly. Before this signing, I thought defensive tackle was the weakest position on the team. No kidding. Like, even over right tackle. So, not a whole lot to say, not a big flashy player, but a guy that's going to put his nose down, get to work, and really free up a lot of stuff for the players around him. You know, he will eat up them double teams, Leonard Williams will get more one-on-ones over this, you know, the middle linebackers, the linebackers behind him will have better lanes, and will have <laughs> just an easier pass to the ball carrier, that's for sure. So, nothing huge, you know, nothing flashy like we saw last year, but... 
hey, you know, nose tackle is a foundational piece. It impacts every other position on the field, every position. This is a middling kind of player, and you're getting them out of vet minimum. So, bravo. That's it for me. Like, subscribe, and peace.